a while ago that the relationship that the cops have with Isabel's parents is not what it used to be. Listen to this and we'll analyze this as well. It's coming. Might take a second. It's somewhat more strained now. I mean, we, we are doing interviews. We're asking very pointed questions. I'm sure that even they have talked about in their conversations with you their frustration. Um, I understand that. I recognize that. Probably the, the relationship as time goes on becomes more strained. That's quite normal and natural. All right, Vicki Ziegler, family law attorney. Uh, what are your theories? And this is sheer speculation. We want to label it that because police are not saying what they learned that was so disturbing that it caused them to ban the father from having contact with the two boys. Right, the obvious one would be, of course, when CPS comes in, they think that the children may be, they, they may be harmed in some way. The welfare of the children, the safety of the children need to be removed. That's the obvious one. I don't know if that's happening here. The second one, which probably is more likely, the children are being separated from the father. They were there at the scene. They may have information that affected, or would, be, would perhaps the father would impede the investigation in the sense of them being interviewed and not being coerced by their father. They want to have independent interviews of these children away from the father. He consented. He could have fought it and said, no way, I'm not leaving my house. I'm going to be with my children. He didn't. That's what I'm leaning towards, that, the, that CPS in conjunction with the police want to make sure that these children are unadulterated. They are interviewed without the parents, and if they have any information about the missing child, that, that poor Isabel, that's what's going to happen. Well, you know, we had video of the detectives uh, a few days ago bringing in the father mm -hmm. separately, the mother separately, and one of the boys separately. Now, this weekend, we saw Isabel's mother, Becky, out alone. This is the first time she's been alone since this information about her husband. Her husband nowhere to be found. Here's what Becky had to say on Mother's Day. That's all we have right now, but wow, you can hear the anguish in the mother's voice, and she's pretty hysterical, as you would expect. Uh, Vicki Ziegler, family law attorney, what do you make of it? Yeah, she sounded harrowed. She sounded shocked. She said, uh, you know, she sounded like something is really wrong. She knew the child should have been there. The child should not be out of the home. And apparently, the husband was the last person to actually see this child. They put the children to bed, the child to bed and the other boys. She left for work and was rushed home. So she seemed shocked, flabbergasted, clearly not involved, uh, you know, from our perspective when you hear a woman like that, a mother so shocked that her child is missing. Yeah, I get from it that she seems like, oh, she's called home. She's like, what? My child's missing? She comes home and she's calling and doing everything she can. It sounds very believable to me. Mm -hmm. Now, we also obtained exclusive police scanner audio uh, from the morning that Isabel vanished. This is the uh, 911 operator describing what's going down at the Celis household. Listen to this. When the father went to get her up, she was not in the bed. They searched the residence and found the, her bedroom window open and the screen on the ground outside. All right, the police are confirming that it was Isabel's father who raced out to find her um, and that it was the 14-year-old son who first called 911 when they said, oh, it was her sister. I think they were hearing a little boy's voice and probably thinking it was a girl. Uh, his voice hasn't changed yet. So now we're, he, we just heard the mom come back from the hospital where she works as a nurse, and she's pretty hysterical. Um, again, cops say uh, they're not sure if Isabel's window was the entry point, but the window was open, the screen knocked out. Uh, Jerry, New York, your questioner, you can see the mother is distraught. She's hysterical. She's just come home from the hospital. She's not the one who actually discovered the child missing. It's supposedly Isabel's father who discovered the child missing. The 14-year-old son, the older brother, initially gets on the phone, but we are not going to play that to you because he's a minor, and we uh, are respectful of that. Uh, the mother picks the phone up from him, and let's listen to some more of her. Who noticed her gun? Your husband? My husband. I went to work this morning at 7, and... You 
Vicki Ziegler, family law attorney. My gosh, what a dramatic tape. And we're going to play more of it as we are re it up. Your thoughts? Heart-wrenching. I mean, you sound hyster you hear hysteria in her voice. She comes home, she leaves, she thinks her child's there. All of a sudden, oh my God, she probably came into the home. Her husband's saying, where's, the, where's Isabel? The son is on the phone with 911. She must have not known what happened. And it's so interesting. They asked her, did you hear anything? She said nothing before she left between 7 and 7.30 and went to work. So interesting. Well, this is what's interesting. Criminal profiler Pat Brown is that the cops have said the two older boys uh, who were there, the 10 and the 14 year old, can stay with the mom. So uh, they trust the mother to stay and care for the two boys. It's the father that they have banned from seeing these children and even phoning these children. And you dovetail that with the mother goes to work and she says, uh, I didn't see anything because she goes to work as a nurse very early in the morning at a hospital that they didn't have anything to do with this, which means I wonder that she does wonder something about her husband as well. What, what did you make of that? You know what? I, we really don't know what's happening here. I mean, the father willingly leaves the house. We don't know. Nobody's seen this child, heard from this child. They've had a thousand tips call in. The, the police are doing everything they can. They've had armies of institutions looking for this child. We don't really know what's going on. So it's, it's hard to speculate. All right. You know, Mary really Ann, New York. Mary Ann, New York. Your mom ultimately turned on Kyron's dad over uh, her feelings that his wife, who quickly became estranged, was possibly some way involved. No one was ever charged in this case. But Vicki Ziegler, your family law attorney, nothing pits two people against each other than, my gosh, what were you thinking? Right. You, it, it, this child disappeared on his watch. I mean, it, it, nothing can turn a marriage sour than that, even if it was a good marriage. You don't want to ever believe that your spouse, the person you live with, love, and sleep in the same bed with, could do anything to your own children, your own flesh and blood. And that's what happens, unfortunately, in these cases. And you know what? In the case we're talking about, we don't know with Isabel. What happened? Nobody knows. Did the father do something to her? Did somebody take this child and steal it? We have no idea. Yeah. It's, uh, it's perplexing, but I think one of the things that we have to do is take a deep breath and step back and remind our viewers that this man is not being called a suspect by police. And Pat Brown, if he were to respond so quickly, I mean, wouldn't you want to take a moment to pause and reflect? As to whether or not you really heard anything, Vicky? I think, you know what, in hysteria, those kinds of moments where you don't know where your child is, you panic, you don't really know what to say, you're just absolutely freaking out. And I think the credibility issue that everyone's pointing Sergio on, a lie detector, I think, was administered. That's going to point to some information. Tomorrow, we are going to play these tapes in their entirety, uh, or for the most part. But we're, gonna, we're processing them. We're going to have all of them, including the father, when he gets on the phone, the center of this case, Sergio Salas. You're going to hear him tomorrow on the show. So please join us.